Hi everyone, it's Michael. So it's been a while since I've done a problem involving actual numbers, so I thought it would be fun to give it a shot again. Um, so this problem is from the USA Amy number one. So there's two Amy exams and you get a choice of which one you want to do. But either one, um, if you do well enough, you qualify for the USA Math Olympiad. Uh, so this was number 15 on the exam, so the hardest problem. Uh, so if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so now I'm going to show you two solutions. I got really close to solving it the first way, but then I gave up, and then I solved it the second way. So I'm going to show you both. Uh, so we have a triangle ABC. Uh, the circumcircle is omega, and the orthocenter is H. And let the tangent to the circumcircle of triangle HBC at H intersect omega at X and Y. And suppose that AH is 3, HX is 2, and HY is 6. Then we want to find the area of triangle ABC. All right. So for the first approach, uh, what we do is we extend XY to meet BC at a point. So I'm going to call that point G. And that allows us to use power of a point a whole bunch of times and make a lot of progress. Uh, so I'm going to use power of a point uh, from G. Um, so we have GX times GY uh, is equal to GB times GC. Uh, that's using power of a point on omega. But then GB times GC is equal to GH squared. Uh, that's using power of a point on the circumcircle of triangle BHC. And so this equation alone is enough to solve for GX because GY is GX plus 8 and GH is GX plus 2. So I'm going to do that right here. So we have GX times GX plus 8 is equal to GX plus 2 squared. And then if you solve, you get GX is equal to 1. So that's the first step. Um, after that, um, I'm going to first note something. So if you extend AD to meet the circumcircle omega at a point, uh, so I'm going to call it J, uh, we can use power of a point. So AH times HJ is equal to XH times HY. Okay. Um, so this is just written in the reverse order. Uh, but we know three of the four segments here, so we can solve and we get HJ is equal to four. But however, it's a well-known fact that the reflection of the orthocenter over any side of the triangle lies on the circumcircle. I've mentioned this on my channel a whole bunch of times. So basically that means HD is equal to DJ, and so they both have to equal two. Okay, so this is that well-known fact. J is the reflection of H over BC. So HD is equal to DJ is equal to two. So I'm gonna write in those numbers there. All right. Um, and now what we can do is we can start completing the picture. Uh, we have enough information to find GD um, because GHD is a right triangle. Uh, so by the Pythagorean theorem, we have GD squared is GH squared minus HD squared. And so if you solve that, you get GD is equal to the square root of five. So I'm gonna write that out there. So I got all the way up to this step and then I gave up and did the second approach. But it's really not too long from here to, to finish off the problem. I just didn't see it. Um, we can use power of a point again uh, from G. So GB times GC is equal to GX times GY. Uh, we actually said that before, but now we know a little more information because we know that GB is root 5 minus BD, and we know that GC is root 5 plus DC. So I'll explain how this works. Uh, GX times GY, uh, that's 9, because it's 1 times 9. And GB is root 5 minus BD, and BC is root 5 plus DC. And so if you expand that out, you get 5, uh, plus root 5 times DC minus BD, and then minus BD times DC. But we can calculate BD times DC using power of a point. Uh, so BD times DC is AD times DJ, which is 10. So if you substitute that in, you can solve for DC minus BD. 
And now, so DC minus BD ends up being 14 over root 5. And from there, now it's just essentially algebra to get to um, DC plus BD. So DC plus BD uh, would be BC. We have DC minus BD. Uh, but if you combine it with uh, this equation above, which is their product, BD times DC, you can get the sum instead of the difference. So I'm just going to do a little algebra here. So BC squared is, it's DC plus BD uh, squared. And that's DC minus BD squared plus 4 times BD times DC. That's just algebra. And now we can substitute the information that we know. And that ends up being 396 over 5. And so BC ends up being 6 root 55 over 5. And once we know that, that's enough to calculate the area of triangle ABC because uh, it's just base times height over 2. So the area of ABC, it's 1 half A. This should be 1 half AD times BC. Uh, and if you work it out, it's 3 squared of 55. Now, for this contest, the answer to every question has to be an integer. So they said that if you write it as m root n uh, in reduced form, they want to find m plus n. So the answer would be 3 plus 55, which is 58. All right, so that's the first solution. I feel like that's probably the easiest solution to this problem. So I got so close, I got all the way up to this point, and then I abandoned it and I went for the second approach. So I'm gonna show you how I actually ended up solving it, which is probably a little bit more complicated, um, but there's a lot you can learn from this approach. All right, so I'm gonna delete uh, the stuff I added in before. Um, so in my second approach, it turns out that A is actually the midpoint of arc XY. Uh, so I'm gonna prove that here. Um, so first I'm gonna draw the circumcenter O of triangle ABC. So to say that A is the midpoint of arc XY, it's the same as saying that OA is perpendicular to XY. Uh, so when I first did this, I actually discovered this through a much more complicated angle chase than what I'm going to show you now. Um, so we want to show that OA is perpendicular to XY. Uh, that would show what I just said. But it actually, it's a well-known fact that OA is perpendicular to EF. So I'm going to prove both that, and I'm going to prove that EF is parallel to XY. All right, so I'm going to write this out. Uh, so first, I'm going to just state something that's that's very well known. So uh, BFC and BEC are both right angles, so BFEC has to be cyclic. And now we can do a little bit of angle chasing. Uh, so angle XHB has to equal angle HCB, uh, since XH is tangent. And angle HCB is equal to angle FCB, uh, which is equal to angle FEB, since BFEC is cyclic. And so if angle XHB is equal to angle FEB, then that means FE has to be parallel to XY. Um, so said another way, XH is parallel to EF. And if you combine it with that well-known fact, that means XH is perpendicular to AO. So I'm going to prove that well-known fact that EF is perpendicular to AO. Um, so I've done this on my channel a couple times before. Uh, but if we draw the tangent to omega at A, so I'm going to draw that tangent line, and I'm just going to pick a point on it for reference, call it G. Uh, it's not hard to show that AG has to be parallel to EF. Uh, so I'm going to do an angle chase here. Uh, so we have angle GAB is equal to angle ACB, since G is tangent. And angle ACB is equal to angle AFE, since BFEC is cyclic. And so if angle GAB is equal to angle AFE, uh, then AG has to be parallel to FE. And we said that that's already parallel to XY. Uh, we just found that from the last step. So AG is parallel to XY, um, but we know AG is also perpendicular to AO. Um, so OA is perpendicular to AG, and so that means OA has to be perpendicular to XY. Uh, so I've seen this sort of trick before to show that OA is perpendicular to FE, 
but then in this problem we show that in fact it's also perpendicular to x y and so if that's true it's easy to see by symmetry that a has to be the midpoint of arc x y and so that means that a x is equal to a y all right so now it turns out we actually have enough information to calculate both AX and AY. Uh, so one way is to use Stewart's theorem. Uh, that's actually how I did it initially. Uh, I used Stewart's theorem on triangle AXY. Um, but there's actually a trick. Since it's an isosceles triangle, there's actually a way, a shortcut that you can use. So I'm going to show you that right now. Uh, since AX is equal to AY, uh, that means there's a circle centered at A uh, passing through X and Y. Uh, so I'm going to call that circle Omega. So for now, it's just going to um, overlap this problem statement a little bit, but so this circle is Omega, um, and, and it passes through both X and Y since AX is equal to AY. And now we can use power of a point on H, uh, to find the radius of that circle, uh, which is both AX and AY. So the power of h with re respect to that circle, it's 12, because it's 2 times 6. But it's also the radius squared minus 3 squared. So we have h, a, h I'm sorry, x h times h y is a x squared minus a h squared. And then if you substitute that, a, you get a x is equal to root 21, which is also a y, which is the radius of that circle. So I'm going to hide the circle. Um, both AX and AY are both root 21. All right. So where do we go from here? Um, so I'm going to continue doing uh, the same thing that I did in the previous problem where I find HD and BJ, um, just using power of a point again. Um, actually, before I do that, uh, I'm going to use... So root 21 was the radius of that circle omega, but I'm actually going to calculate the radius of um, the circle. Well, I'm sorry, I used omega as the name for both of the circles. Well, anyways, I'm going to find the radius of the circumcircle of ABC. Um, so I'm going to let M be the midpoint of XY. So basically we have an isosceles triangle here. Um, it's clear that AM and O are collinear, so I'm going to calculate AM using the Pythagorean theorem. So we have AM squared is AX squared minus XM squared. XM is half of 8, which is 4. So if you substitute that in, you get AM is equal to the square root of 5. Okay. And from here, it's just a bunch of algebra to find the radius of the circumcircle of ABC. Um, so XMO is a right triangle, um, so I'm going to draw it in. But since XMO is a right triangle, um, we have XO squared is XM squared plus MO squared. Uh, XM we know is 4 because it's half of 8. Uh, but MO is the radius, um, AO minus AM. Um, and AO, the radius, it's the same as XO. So basically we have this equation, XO squared is equal to XM squared plus XO minus AM squared. And we know both XM and AM, so we can solve for XO. And it turns out that XO ends up being 21 over 2 root 5. And so that's the radius of the circle. All right. Now I still don't think it's super obvious how to um, finish off the problem. So I'm going to show you. Um, so I'm going to use power of a point as in my last solution. Uh, so we have AH times HJ is 2 times 6, which is 12. Um, so that means that HJ has to equal 4. And then like I mentioned before, uh, J is the reflection of H over BC. So we have HD is equal to DJ, and they're both equal to 2. All right. So I put both of the twos there. And now there's a really nice theorem um, about quadrilaterals that are inscribed in a circle where the diagonals are perpendicular. 
So if you look at ABJC, it's a cyclic quadrilateral with perpendicular diagonals. And so I'm going to write out a theorem that holds for them. Um, so it turns out that if you have a cyclic quadrilateral with perpendicular diagonals, then you have to have AD squared plus BD squared plus JD squared plus CD squared has to equal 4R squared, where R is the radius of the circle. Uh, so I'd just seen this before, but uh, if you haven't seen it, I'd highly recommend proving it. It's a, it's a really fun theorem. So anyways, if we apply that, uh, we can substitute AD and DJ, and then we get BD squared plus CD squared is 296 over 5. Okay, and if we know BD squared plus CD squared, and we also know uh, BD times CD, uh, by power of a point, and that's basically enough to finish off the problem uh, like we did before. So I'm going to do a, a little bit of algebra here to calculate BC. Uh, so BC squared, it's BD plus CD squared, and then here's what you get when you expand it out. And um, so BD squared plus CD squared we can substitute in, and then BD times CD we know by power of a point uh, that is 10, just like in the last solution. And so if you work out all the calculations, you get BC is equal to 6 root 55 over 5. And then just as before, area, it's 1 half base times height. Uh, this should be AD again, not AH. So the area is 3 root 55, and M plus N is 58. So this second solution, I feel like, is, is more complicated than the first. Um, so even though I couldn't do it the first way, I was able to do it this more complicated way. Um, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.